And Fanula, there is a town that is located just to the south of Bor, some 50 kilometers uh, away from it, and that is where the UN, for example, believes that tens of thousands of people have fled, and they have absolutely no support in that area, no access to anything. Michael Schumacher remains in a medically induced coma in a French hospital after his weekend skiing accident. He suffered severe head trauma. CNN's Jim Balding tells us more about his latest condition, which doctors say is stable but still critical. Uh, the doctors did not give us uh, an update today. They have decided that unless there is something significantly changed in his uh, condition, they're not going to be briefing the press on how Michael Schumacher is doing. So it was up to his manager, Sabine Kemp, to uh, come out uh, earlier today. And to, just to give us a, an update, uh, how it's been explained to her how Michael did overnight. Take a listen. Michael's condition has been uh, supervised all night long very carefully and his condition remained stable last afternoon, last night and also this morning. This is a good news for the moment and I repeat for the moment because overall the situation is still critical. He remains in an artificial coma. Now that was several hours ago, uh, Fanula. We were not expecting to get any other updates today. So the doctors continued to say, and they said yesterday in Sabine, it is really hour by hour. And don't forget, when Michael Schumacher had his second operation on Monday night, doctors say they did find other, dam some other parts of his brain damage from the fall, not just the, the part that they were able to remove or a lesion, a bruise they were able to remove Monday night. So uh, no more updates today that we are aware of. Uh, but I think some of his fans could latch on to that word, stable. And well, time now to take our second break. We'll be right back. And before we end this edition of the news, a recap of our stories making headlines. President Jamey has deplored corruption and moral impropriety, but not without calling for discipline in our schools, homes and institutions. Gambians last night flocked to the tourism development area and other sites to welcome the year 2014 in grand style and of course watch impressive fireworks display. South Sudan President Salva Kiir has declared a state of emergency in two states and sent a team of negotiators to Addis Ababa for peace talks. And a Formula one legend, Michael Schumacher, is still in a critical but stable condition. This, after a skiing accident, left him with severe head trauma. That was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for your time and do enjoy a range of interesting programs. Until then, I am Fatou Janimbai and wish you all a happy new year with peace and success.
um, the final question on the home front. Indiscipline, corruption. You've talked about these issues over and over and over again. They still seem to be a problem. They are a problem still, based on what you are saying. Did you, at any point in time, underestimate the extent of the problem? <laughs> Uh, well, corruption, uh, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it's very uh, infinitesimal compared to certain countries, most countries in fact. We are the least corrupt country, but am I blowing my trumpet? No. We want to be a zero corruption country. We have zero tolerance for corruption. And it makes me annoyed that despite our fight against corruption, people are still very brief. One, not because they believe in God, because Allah would not bar, uh, protect you when you are corrupt, but because of this phenomenon of so-called gram marabus. And so, people have gone to jail. Three quarters of the money they have stolen has been given to the Marabus. The Marabus are enjoying their life. They will not even be run sort of cast for. The, the SIM card is always full. Their wives are so healthy and huge, enjoying life and driving expensive vehicles. You are in, in my hotel, five star. So, yes, did I expect that I would wipe out corruption? Yes, when I came in 94, that is what I thought. But I realized that uh, corruption is like a hair. The more you save your hair, it goes back. In depot, they used to say, Jikona Kawa. You save him, he go come back. And I thought also that uh, this is also another. I thought that if religion is deeply entrenched in the hearts of and minds of people, one would not need to fight corruption. I made a big. Mistake. If they fear God, the fear of God is not even there. Even those who are supposed to instill inculcate in the minds of people the religion the sacred text hmm. they commercialize burials recitation of the quran if you ask if your relative god forbid your relative dies and you don't have the we money they don't expect much from you you find it it's difficult for any man to go and take care of the rights but oh let them hear that uh, a big man something died all of them would be rushing there, the manual challenge. And when a poor man dies. So, those people that are supposed to be representing God or the Prophet Sallallahu they were Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking his place to propagate Islam. Or, I can talk about Islam because on the other side I've seen a better example. And always I tell them, we the Muslims are the problem in this country. Look at, Go to, go to the courthouses and look at the, all the criminal cases, that new criminal cases that came up in, uh, uh, in, during the course of 2013. 99.9% .9 are all Muslims. You go to Malta, you, find, you hardly find an apple there. And they are Gambians. Whereas the, the population of Christians may be 5% in this country, 